All right. You guys can hear me okay? I guess we're going to get started. Okay, so uh, a few months ago, uh, I got uh, an email asking if I could come and speak. And of course, you know, I'm sitting at my desk in my office, and speaking means that I have to prepare a PowerPoint deck. You guys know this. You've done many, many PowerPoint decks. And I thought, gee, this is a conference about creativity and about sharing. But my talk, I wanted to be about creativity and collaboration. And I got to thinking, well, why don't we collaborate together and actually create this together? Why don't we collaborate on this? So guess what we're going to do today? Instead of me getting up here and going through slides, instead, we are going to create the talk real time together as a group. Okay? So this is, now we are one big team. Okay, this isn't me and you separate, this is one big team. So every one of you, I want you to start thinking at this exact moment about what creativity means to you and what collaboration means, okay? What, how you define those things. And I then want you to think about what you like about creative and what you don't like. Okay, and we're gonna do this. Now the first thing I need is I need someone who knows how to work PowerPoint because I want you to come up on stage here with me and I want you to help create the talk. I need someone to, to, uh, to build the deck with me. So do I have any volunteer? Cause I'm coming out there, okay? We have a volunteer right here. PowerPoint master, yes! <laughs> Woo! By the way, there is no backup plan. So if nobody stepped forward, I was screwed, okay? So this is it. So awesome. Let's uh, come on up here. I, I, you can figure out how to get PowerPoint working. You've got some time. Congra congratulations on your new job. Um, so, okay. So when I think about creative, I think, okay, maybe we need a saying that kind of sums up how we feel. So I was, last night I was laying in my bed upstairs in, on the 13th floor, which I, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. Um, and I was thinking, you know, this, you know the old saying, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts? You might have heard this. What an interesting saying, right? Who came up with this? The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Well, that's essentially what we're talking about now. Does anybody here have uh, a, a saying that kind of sums up the way when people come together? Has anyone got, that, got an idea? And I'm going to need somebody with a microphone that can run around. A little bit. I can run around for you. Back here in the, in the center, uh, center row. Let me hear what you've got about, about creativity. This is the law of perception uh, that was discovered by the Gestalt psychologists which says that uh, the whole is not only the sum of the parts, but is much greater. Thank you. Thank you. All right, okay. So I want you to summarize that as best you can, and I take it you can also speak Russian really well. <laughs> so you're going to have an easy time. We're going to call this creativity and collaboration and everyone in the room. And the best part of it is we all own this, okay? This belongs to all of us. So you can take this around with you everywhere you go on, a, on, a, on, a, uh, on your Google Drive and share it with friends. Okay, so we're going to try to capture the spirit of this. If we don't get it right, then you'll have to come up and uh, make corrections. Okay, did you catch what she said? She needs to repeat on this. How would, let's have someone else, let's have someone else volunteer to summarize, because let's collaborate on this idea. Who wants to rephrase? Творчество — это когда ты создаешь что-то новое, то, чего не было до тебя. Creation and creativity is when you create and make something new that has never been before you. Right. So, creating something that has never before existed. This is great. This is exactly what we should all strive for. Now, we'll, we'll, create, uh, we'll create a new... We'll create a new um, We'll go to the next thing here. I would like to, I would like to figure out with you guys, let's, we're in a workshop, and I say, what stops us from being creative? Does anyone, 
have, a, have, a, have an idea, what stops us from being creative? I heard something over here, someone? Uh, I suppose it's mostly a lack of imagination. <laughs> imagination. Yep. So we need to find ways, if I'm hearing you right, to let, get our imagination moving. To, to, to think of, to get our imagination, lubricating the gears of our mind. Some people take drugs, <laughs> right? I, I, uh, drugs are kind of interesting. I'm not against drugs, but I've never had to take drugs myself. Do you take drugs? <laughs> so we should write drugs, maybe, maybe no drugs. Um, so, <laughs> no drugs. Was that Nancy Reagan who said, just say no to drugs? God, did that work its way into this talk? <laughs> what was that? Don't talk to drugs. <laughs> In Washington State, where I'm from, we've legalized the use of marijuana now. So we can be, yeah, <laughs> we can be... <laughs> We can be stoned all day long, and it's cool. Okay. Hey, Chris, there is another mic over here. So oh, there's another? There's if what? there is somebody who wants to speak up, I've got oh. another mic right here. Please, please, please. Let's, let's move to... Take it. Back there. Oh, there. <laughs> now that we've got drugs completely out of the way. On the topic of what prevents us from creating, you mean? Yes. Yeah? I think that uh, the most preventing thing is when you are satisfied with everything and you don't want to improve, don't want to make something new like this. Right, so how are we going to capture the spirit of that? Uh, we, yes, there we go. Satisfaction with the status quo, uh, you know, you're just happy with the way things are. Believe me, this happens when you get old, okay? Because you're just like, I like it this way. I like, I like it this way. We call these, um, like, uh, what's the word we use? Like grognards or, uh, 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 you know, just people like this. Anyone else, what stops creativity from happening? Right here. Oh, this gentleman, first. Let's just go here and then here. Yes. It's here. We fear something, and that's why we don't create anything. <laughs> okay, Thank we you. are the problem. People are the problem. Fears. Oh, fear, fear, fear. This is good, this is good. Right, we're really close now. Thane and I were, have lots of conversations about fear stops us from The fear of not having a pair of jeans that match everyone else. The fear of wearing pajamas. Um, and then we're not going to forget sorry, about we you. we have a lot of hands rising. Okay, this is good, this is good. Hands are good. I was worried that this, this energy, we're going to get this going. Uh, maybe it's some rules that's stopping us from creativity. Rules, rules. The establishment. What do you guys think? Maybe do you, this word, the establishment. The rules of the establishment. Culture uh, keeps us from creating. Preconceptions and stereotypes. Of This is how it's always been done. This is how, so tradition? Yeah. Do you think it's fair to say traditions? You know, if you want to have a wedding, you've got to wear a wedding dress. The, me the, the groom has to wear black or something in a suit, right? He's got to have best men, and there's going to be bridesmaids. Why can't we come to a wedding and wear um, jeans and T-shirts, right? Okay, I think laziness because there is no reason not to create something. Right, laziness. You just don't give a shit. That's not this room. You guys give a shit, right? <laughs> We're going to get the creativity moving. So this is all the things that stop creativity. Um, let's go to the front row and then... It was already done? It was already done. Like, um, you build on his point, take his point to the next level, or do you have a separate point? Maybe you can summarize that. I think, I think everyday routine uh, stops us to be creativity. The team. Be creative. The everyday routine. The everyday routine. Yeah. The, the routine. Too busy, you've got to get up, you've got to shower, you've got to get dressed, you've got to get to work, you've, 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 you've got email, it's lunchtime. Next thing you know, what the hell? Creativity. In the very back. 
I think there are some cognitive bias that stop us from creating something as, uh, for example, when somebody invents something, people think, oh, you could do that? I didn't ever think that you could do it in such a way. Right, right. There's some force that keeps us from doing something because we, we, we just don't, like, we just didn't know that it was okay. I had this situation a couple of days ago where I was giving a demo of the new game we're developing in Seattle and the CEO said to me, why are you showing this on only 16 computers? This is a 30 player game. Why are we on 16 computers? And I said, I didn't know that we had more computers. <laughs> you know, uh, and he looked at me, not, not a good moment for me. And I was like, you're right, you're right. We needed to show this on more computers. Sometimes it's maybe it's the sheer cost of the experiment because uh, just uh, deciding to make an experiment isn't cheap. Uh, just to you know get up uh, working prototype can take a week to. So make resources, it. Yeah. resources, yeah. lack lack of resources. Okay, let's do one more, and then we're going to move to uh, what allows creativity. I think sometimes it's just your stupidity that stops you, and sometimes it's uh, the boss one, uh, stupidity. <laughs> well, what's good about that one, okay, so I, I kind of agree in a way. Um, you could say stupidity, or you could say that if you take your brain and you think of your brain as a muscle, and, and you make it your job to exercise the muscle, okay? So I do pottery. Okay, this is something I do in my spare time. I do pottery, so I have to use my, my upper body strength. Okay, well, the first time I did pottery, I was weak. But now when I do pottery, I'm strong because I do pottery every weekend as much as I can because I like it. It helps clear my mind. Okay, so there's tools that you can use to make your imagination and your mind stronger. Okay, so you practice. So if you practice your creativity. Now, quick story. When I was in elementary school, in, out, in, out in the woods, the teacher one day said, we're gonna learn about brainstorming. And I was like, brainstorming? What the hell is brainstorming? You guys have all heard this now, right? This is 400 years ago, okay? 1975, <laughs> okay? She draws a circle on the board and she puts a word in the middle of the circle. Let's say the word is house. And she said, let's brainstorm house. So draws a line from the house, and someone says, car. Uh, we break car, draw another line from house, and you say, um, yard, right? And she says, okay, you see what's happening here? You're confined to house. So when someone said, you know, zombie apocalypse, she says, now you're getting somewhere. Now she didn't, I don't remember what happened, but you understand the point, right? It's not about the house. It's about all the other things. Like when, when George Lucas created Star Wars, right? He, he had a moment where he said, in a galaxy far, far away, a long time ago, how many people told a futuristic story that was supposed to take place a long time ago? I don't know anybody who did that before I heard about Star Wars. So he, 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 he got it, he understood it. He's extremely, I mean, he's, I would say he's, a, he's an archetypical example of creativity. Just taking things and making them fit together. We're going to have futuristic swords. We're going to have this. We're going to have that. We're going to do all of this stuff. We're going to mix culture and, and religions and governments. We're going to just shove it all together and we're gonna, he's going to call it Star Wars. And it worked. And we were delighted by it. Even though they were concepts that we were familiar with, he put them together in ways that they just wouldn't normally go together. He was, he's probably one of the best at doing this in terms of his art. Okay, so the, now the new question is, what fuels creativity? What makes creativity happen? Who wants to go first? Who need a microphone? Sorry, Tatiana. You're getting your exercise today. Yeah, I thought I will. <laughs> oh, I think it's the um, most acceptable fuel of creativity is your own experience. And you make uh, creativity from everywhere you see. Uh, like uh, I explained, uh, I go to work, I see uh, pigeons have a fight for uh, some, uh, some food. Yeah, I think, oh, I can uh, explain, I, I, I can make a game of uh, this uh, kind of crap. 
Right, so in a, what I heard you say is that you're inspired. It's like your, your radio is turned on, you're receiving the signals, you're saying, I'm ready to receive openness, an openness to creativity. Danny. Maybe it is your desire to uh, uh, see and make something new. When you see a game which you do like, but uh, it is not exactly what you're looking for. And there's no uh, game or any other thing uh, that is... Um, that is uh, just as good as you want it. Right. And you want... Uh, Something you and you know that you can do it, and this is your desire to make it. Right. So the desire, the the, the this ingrained human desire to make things better, and 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 when others haven't made it, like it's 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 amazing. I'm gonna tell you a quick story, quick quick here. I'm in the bathrooms just now, and the new way that the men's bathroom works is that when you step up to the urinal, I'm sorry, I'm giving away the secret, right, to all of you who. It, it, it kind of flushes a little bit for you right away. It gets you in the mood, okay? <laughs> Who thought of this? This is brilliant! And then when you're done and walk away, it, right? But this is creativity, making something better that was there for 30, 40, 50 years. Someone got a better idea. Danny, oh, over here, Tatiana. На самом деле мозг и правда работает как мышца, и, э, но только у тренировки для него нужны несколько другие, например, делать вещи, которые вы обычно не делаете. Вы утром встаете, чистите зубы зубной щеткой правой рукой, э, одеваете вещи, ну, в общем, все как обычно. Э, если вы поступите иначе, вы наденете вещи сначала, потом почистите зубы левой рукой, то это уже будет маленькая тренировка. В общем, делать какие-то необычные вещи, нарушающие паттерны. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the mind and fog does work like a muscle, uh, but to train it, you need to do something uh, like unusual that you've never done before. You get up every morning, you brush your teeth with your right hand, you put your clothes on. Uh, if you change the routine, if you uh, put your clothes on first, then you brush your teeth with your left hand, then your mind muscle starts to work. I like that. I like that. Break up your daily routine. Break up that routine. That's beautiful. Uh, I wanted to add a bit about uh, what stops us to be creative. Uh, it's lack of uh, vision of what we want to get. Uh, once I started to model a chair and I ended up with giant monster head covered with blood stains. <laughs> uh, and uh, we should see uh, in our head what we actually want uh, to end up with. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> okay. so, so here's what I'm hearing. So you're saying, you know, you have to have the vision. You have to be willing to, 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 to follow this whimsy. Give yourself permission. I think that's what that I heard you say. Give yourself permission to chase yes. after something. It's uh, really easy to be creative in a uh, vacuum, uh, create anything. But when you need to create something uh, particular, uh, it gets uh, a, a lot harder, mm -hmm. uh, so you have to have vision. You have to have vision. And so exercising the ability to have vision, Danny. A little bit. Be curious, trust yourself and look for something new. Be curious, trust yourself and look for something new. That's great, that's great. Be curious, be curious. You know, when I'm sitting in a doctor's office, what magazine do I wish the doctor's office subscribed to? I secretly wish there was the latest video game magazine. But there are no video game magazines in the doctor's office. There's magazines on, on, on women's health, generally. So you know what I do? I read the damn thing, okay? This is important. It gets my brain thinking about things that are outside of, of, of video games. We'll go here. А вот еще хорошо это у детей получается. Смотреть на обычные вещи, ну как упражнения для креативности, и придумывать, как их можно применить необычным способом. Ну, например, там компьютер как подставка и так далее. Children do this thing very great. 
uh, they look at ordinary things and they think about how they can use it in an, uh, some creative way. It's like a training exercise in creativity. Right, right, absolutely. Children are great at this. When you have children, I have four boys, and I just have to watch what they do. They do the craziest shit, okay? They are truly inspiring. Danny, and then we're going to stop on the creative. Uh, you have, like, emotional demons, and you have to exercise them, <laughs> like an emotional outlet. Right, right, right. It's like a dog. You ever have a, you guys have, a, like, a dog that's just really muscular, that, like, jumps off the ground constantly? Like this, and you're like, what's wrong? And the dog's just like, I just gotta go, go, go. It's the, it's the dog's it's demon. Something. It wants you to throw the fucking ball, right? It wants to chase the ball. Give him the ball. You gotta give your mind the ball, I think, is what I'm saying. Hey, just a quick question, quickly. Yes, Does anybody could. here do beatboxing? Is there any beatboxers here? You know that. <laughs> anybody? Danny, are you a beatboxer? No. No, he put his hand down right away. Okay, Chris, Tatiana. Can I have a quick one? <laughs> Experience. The more things you know, the more combinations you can make. Right, right. So knowledge. So it's important probably at some point to balance the intake of information and balance that across a wide spectrum. Okay, Danny, last one for, for this uh, part of them. Uh, come on, guys. This for me, it's firstly, it should be uh, funny. You <laughs> could uh, be happy with it. It's not the thing which, as the boss said you, you should be uh, creative. Uh, it's just from you, and you, uh, you should uh, feel is a uh, needness for you. So I didn't understand everything. Can you, Danny, give me a, give me a, uh, give me a summary. I want a reinterpretation on that. Well, what the hell, right? I mean. You know. I'm just making this shit up. You got to be, you got to be something fun. You got fun. To, yeah, you got to be not something that you're told to do, but you got yeah. to go from the inside, from your guts, and just oh, yeah. explode out into this wow. world. God, I'm getting excited just hearing about this. You know, when I was a kid and I saw a white sheet of paper and some color markers, I just got this sense of joy. Joy that I was going to scribble a bunch of useless shit all over this piece of paper and then show my mother. Look what I made. And she always did the same thing, right? That's amazing. Mothers are really good at this. Thinking, God, my kids, absolutely. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? But, oh, that's beautiful. That's the beauty. That, yeah, I'm, I'm being funny because, you know, we all love what our kids make. But we notice how we inspire it and we, we bring joy to it. And that's, I think, really important, and we'll all do this. All of us who have children in the room will do this with our kids. Danny, you got one more back there. I think that kids, they're just naturals, but sometimes to create something new, you need to really know your craft. So to break some canons, you need to know them. For example, Picasso, he was a brilliant classical painter. And this knowledge of the classical canons, it uh, inspired him and it allowed him to create an entirely new school of painting. Right. So this is kind of important, right? There, you have to know sort of what other people have done so that you don't repeat it. So you sail to new oceans. You can't, dis you can't explore the unknown if you don't know where the unknown is, right? So this is a really <laughs> important thing. But I'll tell you, I worry a little bit. Like, I was playing piano about, uh, I started playing piano about 20-something, 20 20-plus years ago. And I was learning all these classical, this classical music. What concerned me is when I sat down to play, I tended to start playing um, uh, a piece that someone else had already written, because it sounds so good. So it's difficult sometimes, I think, to absorb the creative that others have done and not let it influence you and suck you into sort of um, the old ways of doing things. Okay, so let's hold, let's hold for there. Just one second, I wanna take a look at the time. Okay, we've got, uh, we've got about a half hour left. I want you guys to switch gears now and think about collaboration. Okay, you wanna go one more. He's, he's passionate, I like this, I like this passion. Go ahead, on, on the creative. Yeah. Um. Еще а, одна деталь. А, оставить что-то после себя, плюнуть в вечность. 
And uh, one more detail, you want to leave something after yourself, you like, um, speed into eternity, kind of? Yeah, you want to leave a, you want to leave a legacy. And I'm sorry, what, I'm sorry, what was the last bit? It's a kind of a Russian saying, uh, like a speed, you speed into the last enormous eternity. Wow. <laughs> Like you go to the edge of the world and you speed there. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, that makes perfect sense. I thought it was a little bit uh, dirty. Um, I have a saying around the office, if it doesn't go well, just spit on it. Um, that gets me into trouble every now and again, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so. <laughs> you guys are naughty. I like that. Um, <laughs> oh, the internet, okay. Um, collaboration, collaboration, uh, you can go next, but I want you to answer, I want, uh, Danny, I want you over there, I want you to answer on what makes collaboration fail? Why does collaboration, you're in a room with a bunch of people, you've got ideas, and it's not working. Why does collaboration fail? Can, can, you, can, you, can you take that one? Uh, if you're talking about interaction, о том, почему не получается, то это отчасти и ответ на предыдущий вопрос. То есть очень важно умение воспринимать чужие идеи. То есть мне лично, вот, если отвечая на предыдущий вопрос, очень сильно помогает креативить наличие креативных людей вокруг и такое качество, как умение их услышать. И буквально слово «два» сказанных дает мне возможность «вау!» чужую идею развить, ну, собственно, вот в этом так командная работа креативная и является. When we're talking about collaboration, it is uh, it very connects to the previous point. What helps greatly is to have creative people around you, and when you have that ability to comprehend ideas of others, to accept others' ideas. What helps me to be creative, for example, when I uh, got a couple of guys sitting uh, next to me and I hear them talking something really good, just saying a couple of words, and this gets me going. I go like, wow, I know, I know this just sparked a very cool idea. So you've got to surround yourself with people. So for example, I'm up here on stage. I don't hear an idea from someone and go, that's terrible. That's a shitty idea, right? We don't do this. We don't do this. If you, I want to do, actually I want to do a, um, I, we, I've told we only have 10 more minutes. So uh, we have to speed up a little bit, but um, go, let's go here. Maybe it's uh, some sort of egoism. When you, when, uh, when self-esteem, when uh, everyone just don't want to take another one man point. Right, right. You close the, you're working with some people whose minds are closed. So you have to make sure that you either find people with open minds or you have to teach them how to open up their minds for collaboration. That's what we're doing right now, right? We're doing that right now. We're opening our minds so that we can treat other people's ideas with energy and excitement. Danny. Well, there are two opposite things. Lack of leadership and dictatorship. Mm. A balance between those is essential for a successful collaboration. Right, I agree, I agree. Leadership, you need someone in that room who's going to help guide everybody and kind of help get them all moving in a direction that collaborates around a core idea. Tatiana. Наверное, опять же, это в некотором роде вот страх, когда ты боишься подойти к более опытному коллеге и сообщить ему, что ну, чувак, у тебя вот здесь ошибка, потому что он скажет не. Вот. И, ты не, и ты не знаешь, что ему ответить, если у тебя нет достаточного опыта, если у тебя нет какого-то веса в этой же команде. И с, им нужно, с этим страхом нужно тоже бороться, нужно уметь говорить со всеми. It's probably some kind of fear when you are afraid to come up to your more experienced colleague and say to him, uh, dude, you have a mistake up here. And he just says to you, no, and you don't have enough weight in this company or enough experience to prove it to him that he does indeed have a mistake. So this is the issue we have to fight. 
You know what? Let's talk about fear for, for, for a little longer. Fear is a killer. Fear is a killer for everyone in every way. You have to be fearless. When I told people that I was gonna come up here and I was gonna work with you guys to create a talk in real time, there's a fear. And I had to just push that aside. I had to just say to hell with it, I don't care. I trust in the goodness of people to get behind an idea and I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna make it happen. And when I have no fear, you have no fear. And we're a team. And that's really, really important. So great point, Danny. That would be a complexity of explanation. When you have an idea and you are creative, uh, it's sometimes extremely hard to explain that idea and to prove this idea useful to others. And uh, what essentially kills the whole spirit, when, you, when to make uh, this explanation, you need to break some tools and they're resisting you. And, and you have to make a, a lot of jumps just to makes this explanation work. And when you doesn't have these problems and when you can just go to uh, someone and just say, hey, I have this good idea and explain it in simple words or maybe with the simple drawings, that really helps. But when you can do this, when you have to make a lot of jumps, write emails, uh, contact your superiors and stuff like that, that kills your collaboration and kills uh, kills the cooperation and kills your creativity. You don't yeah. want to think about ideas anymore. Yeah, you know, one of the things, I read a book when I was uh, about 20 years old called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Cor corny, right? Corny sounding book. It sold like a zillion copies, but what did it teach me? How to sell, how to sell. So when I have an idea and I run over, I am selling my idea, getting the other person excited about it. I don't just stand there and hit them over the head with the idea. I inspire them with my idea. You know, take them to lunch, get them on board, and then we bring someone else on board and someone else on board, and we build the idea up, right? This is key, Tatiana. I think that what also makes collaboration fail is an ability to make some sacrifices. As you can't implement everything at once, you have to choose. And this inability to just abandon your idea for the greater good, it could really kill, a, kill your goal. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you really believe in something, absolutely believe in something, you don't abandon it. You may not have the support to do it in the situation that you're in currently. You might have to go someplace else to explore that idea. But don't abandon an idea that you're in love with. I, I fall in love with my ideas, but I also know that not everything that I think of can be realized. That's why it's nice to have a, a list and to kind of work your list of ideas over and to decide what idea you want to develop. Danny? It's a weak skill of communication, a weak skill of knowledge of communication and the inability of people to tell their problems about their problems in the production. Okay. Translation. So the uh, uh, lack of communication skills uh, from people, right. and also maybe fear of people talking about stuff that they're not successful in, and maybe they're la uh, like lacking behind on something or something like that. Right. You got to develop your communication skills. If I wanted to move here to St. Petersburg, and I wanted to design a game here with all of you. I need to learn how to speak Russian, okay? Period. That's all there is to it. What's that? I volunteer. You want to? You're going to teach me? Sure. <laughs> okay. Too many meetings. Too many meetings? Yes. Okay. That's that's what kills collaboration. We we're on um, we're on fail, and we were going to do we we're going to do um, what makes collaboration succeed. But I think our time. I think, we're, I think we've only got a few minutes left, which kind of, kind of sucks because we this is have, fun. I'm, I'm sorry, we will have time to chat with Chris some, sometime else, yep. but right now we're on a schedule. So I think we get the idea, right? That when, I think, so what's, what's, what's really interesting to me is that I love collaboration. I love people. So let me just finish. I'll wrap this up. 
When I was working on Total Annihilation, which sounds like it's a game that a lot of you know about, I brought people together, I gave them a single idea to build on, but when Jeff Petkow walked up to me and he said, I think we should be able to queue commands, um, any number of commands, not five, not 10, any number, I was like, that's a great idea, let's do it. He was passionate about it, I wanted him to go ahead and explore that. And, and the, the thing is, is that at the end of it all, people said, Chris, it's you know, your game, whatever, and I'm like, mm, it's our game. It's, it's just that I had the pleasure of being the project leader and the lead designer, but it was our game as a group. And those ideas came from, all, all, from the whole team. So pick your leader that you know has the right mindset for allowing ideas to come from all over. I think that's really important. Um, but creativity, as we've, as we've summed up, is, is, is a function of dozens of things. And when I thought about doing a presentation on creativity, I, I, I knew one fundamental thing. I don't have all the answers, okay? I couldn't come up here and speak as an authority on something that massive. I can't be an authority on this, I, I'm not. But I can get the ideas. You guys, have you ever watch game shows on TV where it seems like the audience, when the audience yells, they know the answer to every single question. All the answers are here in the room. You guys have all the answers, and you know, you know the solution to get all of these things fixed. So this is, a, I think, a profound um, realization that is awesome. And I really, really appreciate you guys doing this with me. Uh, this, is a, this is fun as hell. I, I could do it for hours with you. And I love um, hearing each of your perspectives spitting into, um, spitting on, uh, in, on the abyss, the edge of a, a, eternity. That's great. That's great, spitting on eternity. That's awesome. It's like, <laughs> all right. So um, how are we doing for time here? We He's have five more minutes for you guys to, like, if you haven't we, said everything we, you wanted to. So we got five to ten minutes for question session, or as a crowd, we can give some few minutes from the question session to let Chris finish all the things that he's doing right now. Or uh, I want to hear more from you guys. I want to hear more questions. Questions drive the conversation forward. So do you have, the microphones are here. People can jump up and ask questions. Uh, so or we just do the do like we were before. Right now it's question session. Uh, and не стесняйтесь задавать вопросы на русском. То есть мы всегда поможем перевести и донести вашу мысль. Можно выйти к микрофонам или мы можем подойти к вам. Right, so there are microphones around the room. We will come up to you. Hi, Chris. Uh, thank you for talk for introduction. Uh, please tell us how you organize a teamwork, how you share your ideas, how you organize daily routine in your team. That's a great question. You know, it starts by, by, by working with uh, cultivating um, a team that you've, you start, you start with no team. We all start with no team. <laughs> and we have people join our world and some people stay and some people leave. Some people stay because we let them stay some, in, in each of our own worlds, okay? And sometimes we have to move away from those people who don't fit, okay? That don't, don't, don't vibe, you know? We don't get along with, right? So for me, over the course of the, the last uh, 20 years, I've collected up a group of about 30 people that work really well with me. They like my, my, my filthy sense of humor, okay? Because it's bad. They, they... <laughs> They, they don't mind when I come up to them, you know, and I, and I touch them, and I go, how's it going? They don't go, ah! They say, woo, that feels good. You know, they like me, and, and, they, and they like working with me. And when I see them in the morning, they go, hey, how's it going? They don't go, oh, shit, like this, right? So it's really important that people meet all those criteria to fit your world. Their world isn't your problem. It's, it's yours that you have to take care of. So for me, I've had the great pleasure of building a team of people that I really love. People I truly love that are around me and help and, 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 and know when I'm having a good day 
and when I'm having a bad day. Because when I'm having a bad day, I need them to forgive me for being an asshole, okay? Because there's days when I'm just like, what just came out of my mouth? I don't believe I said those things. So it's nice that they go, ah, he's just, he's just Chris, doing a Chris thing, right? He'll be better tomorrow or after he eats lunch or whatever, right? So the relationship is kind of like a marriage, but with many, many people in the marriage. It's like being, uh, who is it? Okay. Okay, Danny. Oh, we'll go here. Yeah. Um, hi, Chris. Yes. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your new game and uh, what uh, creative ideas does it have? Uh, what was the crazy ideas that you've implemented? Well, I can certainly talk about a lot of ideas that I, I loved um, that you guys never heard about because the publishers uh, didn't want to publish them. Um, but uh, that's kind of a long thing. Um, uh, so I think uh, I will tell you this, that um, there's many ideas that I hope to get back to that I haven't given up on. And one of the things that I've focused on um, is art, not money. I believe that money is important, but um, it's, it's uh, the, the art of, of game making um, means that you have to focus on the player, the player happiness, and you have to let the money part of the question, the money, the money part be second. And you have to focus on making someone happy. If you make someone happy, you will make money. This is how I've lived. It turns out I didn't make a whole lot of money, so I need to get a lot better at my job because I need to make more people happy, okay? Uh, so I make hardcore gamers happy. Very, but it's a narrow way. I mean, if you compare Thane and I, Thane makes a lot of people happy. I make a narrow band of people happy. <laughs> you know, yeah, okay. Please, next. Uh, hi, Chris. I have a question about an experience and think about your experience. So in your practice, the main best breakthrough ideas was the result of long work period, brainstorms, or it was like a lightning? Well, you know, I started work on Supreme Commander uh, because I wanted to make a bigger RTS game than Total Annihilation. And we were working on it for like six months before I came up with the idea of the strategic zoom. So I'm one of these weird people that doesn't do the full design before. I just start work, okay? This is probably a dangerous way to work when the project is worth, you know, tens of millions of dollars. Uh, but when you have a small team and the game is a, it's a small game, this is the most fun way to work. It's like a piece of clay that you get and you just throw the clay down and you say, I don't know what this is. I'm just gonna, mo I'm just gonna play with it. That's the height of sort of experimental creativity. We don't always have this luxury though. So we have to balance this with a certain amount of pre-production pre and documentation and so forth. I have to admit, not, not always my favorite thing to have to put it all on paper, uh, but um, uh, you have to decide for yourself what sort of um, creative uh, uh, thing. You know, that's, the, that's great about the painting example, the Picasso example, right? The canvas is cheap, oil is cheap, you could just go you throw stuff on the canvas and take a look at it and go, this is great or this is, this is terrible. And it doesn't cost you much. So this is something to envy when it comes to this. But remember also that millions of people have access to canvas and paint, so you're competing with a lot more people. When you build a $100 million video game, for example, you have a very, very narrow group of competitors that are competing. So the, the, the constraints go way, way up. Now you have to really document and be careful in everything you've done. I've never built a game that big, but I can imagine the rigor that people go through to build something that complex. So you have to pick, as an artist, which end of the spectrum that you want to that you want to be on. Tatiana, oh, uh, are we need a kind of frame of our creativity, or our creativity can be uh, must be uh, unframed and totally free? Frames. Say, well, frames of our creativity. Uh, we uh, must have frames of our creativity, or we uh, frames. Must, frames, yeah. Laws, uh, frames, borders, yeah. 
More oh, boundaries. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, we have to. In fact, I think it's, I think it's more or less a, a well-understood concept that when you have to work with some, with some boundaries, whether they be um, time or resources, we, we can actually be more creative. But we don't want to constrict the ideas. We just work within a, within a framework that forces even better ideas to come out. And I totally agree with that. Absolutely. You know, total annihilation was supposed to be like a $300,000 game. So when I started working on it, everything was like, it's got to be done fast, 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 because it's got to keep the price down. It ended up costing a little bit more, but it wouldn't have been the same game if someone had said, here's a check, spend as much money as you want. The game would never have shipped. It would never have been finished. So it, 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 absolutely true in that respect. Okay, I think that's, uh, is, that, is that it? Yes, it's, it says we are out of time, unfortunately, but please don't be upset. We will have time to catch up with Chris sometime later. Uh, thank you, Chris, for your talk and for engaging the audience, and thank you all who participated. You were great, thanks. Yes, thank you, that was great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. Chris, Chris is a very outgoing guy, so don't hesitate to catch him Thank Whatever you, you hey. see him and ask questions. Thank you. That he will gladly well done. answer all fun. of them for you. <laughs>